Iowa Soybean Association is driven to deliver for Iowa's 40,000 soybean farmers. We're proud to provide objective agronomic research, a helping hand with soil and water stewardship, and timely industry news powered by the Soybean Checkoff. Learn more at IASoybeans.com. Hey everyone, it's Paul Yeager. This is the MTOM Show podcast, a production of Iowa PBS and the Market to Market TV show. A couple of weeks a year, I disappear from the show and spend time working for Iowa PBS covering high school girls sports, specifically the championships for basketball and for softball in Iowa. It's something that's kind of fun to do, and it's a good mix of what I've always done in my career. Sometimes you do mix a couple of things that you don't think always go together, but in this case, they do. We're going to talk with Brandon Schwab, who is the head girls basketball coach at Algona Bishop Garrigan High School in Algona, Iowa, which is in the north central part of the state. And Brandon is, again, a state champion coach. We're going to find out what it's like to be on the sidelines and balance family and farming in addition to his life on the farm. That's our discussion today. And one thing about this discussion, his team features the best high school girls basketball player in Audie Crooks. Iowa State Cyclone fans are familiar with her. She'll be a Cyclone next year uh, in Ames. And those in the Big 12 will probably get to know her as well. So we'll talk a little bit about Audie, his family, as well as his life on the farm in Hancock County, Iowa, and also coaching in Algona. So that is our discussion today on the MTOM Show podcast. If you have a tip for me or anything you want to write to me, send me an email at paul.yeager, that's Y-E-A-G-E-R, at iowapbs.org. Now, let's uh, shoot some hoops and talk some farming with Brandon Schwab. Man, you farmers have it rough. Look at you, T-shirt in the middle of March. Is that how it really works? You must not be a, a dairy guy. No, I'm not a dairy guy. Uh, uh, this, this this is our weekly um, March trip after state basketball of and before spring planting that we take every year. So, yep, enjoying Cape Coral. Going to enjoy some Twins baseball this afternoon. All right. I thought farmers were only supposed to pick one sport. You can't pick two. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I've got two. Or fortunately, I have two boys that are involved in all sports. So uh, I get to balance between all of them we'll talk basketball in a little bit but i have to be true to my agriculture audience tell me about the farm well uh i've this is my 14th year of being back farming full-time um i uh, farmed with my uh i farmed with my dad for uh um 13 of those years he passed away last year after the state basketball tournament so last year was my first year of by myself on the farm uh of running things on my own. So it's been a definitely a, uh, um, uh, transition without a doubt, uh, being able to have, uh, a guy that's farmed for 40 years there, um, to beat any question down the door to, uh, now you're farming it all yourself, you know? So, uh, it's been a transition. Luckily I've got a lot of good people around me, good friends and neighbors that have done a lot of years to, to help me through it. And I'm, I'm lucky that I had, you know, 13 years of full-time farming with dad before he passed away. How active was he prior to getting sick? Very active all the way up, all the way up until the last, uh, he, he had been battling cancer for about five or six years, uh, previously, you know, and, um, uh, he was very active all the way up to the fall before, you know, he really didn't get sick to the last, you know, say 45 days before he passed away. So he was very much very active uh, in the daily operation of the farm. So you didn't even have like that last fall to say, yep, this might be it because he's sick. You were that that fall before it was still all all systems go. All systems go the fall before there's yep. He was all systems go putting in as many hours as all of us were every day. So, yeah, I mean, so it was it was a it was a quick and fast thing. But that's sometimes how uh you know, cancer in the world works. So uh, we've had to move on from that and uh, keep the farm going in the right direction because that's what he'd want. I forget, brothers or sisters around too that help? I have a sister that uh, is a uh, school teacher at Waukee District and uh, that's it. So uh, just me and my sister. So it's you now full on everything. Yep. You got to make a whole lot of decisions. So how do you allow someone to have a little bit of you know, blocked out time from say November to March. <laughs> well, uh, luckily, like you said before, I'm I, I'm not uh, I, I'm a grain farmer. You know, uh, I mean, I can still 
um, haul grain during the day and still get to basketball practice at three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, so uh, basketball is one of them sports that allows me to still balance both, uh, both worlds without a doubt, uh, you know, so, um, you know, I would say I market around the basketball a little bit more than I probably should sometimes, you know, of when uh, we don't haul a whole lot of grain in the last four years uh, during state tournament basketball or district basketball. So uh, um, yeah, that's uh, just market around that for sure lately. Well, let's, let's look at it this way. February is usually traditionally a down month for grain. So see, mm -hmm. you're just, you're just biding your time waiting for the markets to rally in March and April. Yeah, that's exactly what was going through my head during that time is uh, that's uh, traditionally uh, uh, a down down spiral market for there. And uh, um, yeah, we'll use that as an excuse for sure. All right. So you're in Kasuth County. So that's the uh, the big tall county for Iowa, right? Uh, yep, I actually farm in Hancock County. Oh, you do? I live in Kasuth. So okay. Hancock is where where all of our where, where the farms are. So north central to getting to be northwest Iowa. How was the year for you last year? Uh, you know, fairly good uh, overall. You know, beans were really, really pretty fantastic for our area. You know, we're, we're a very high pH soil, prairie pothole, flat area that, you know, we we get hurt more on really wet years in our area um, just because of drainage issues than we do on drier years. So, um, you know, we... Uh, uh, we had a good year. Beans were be, beans were definitely uh, very good for us, and you know, corn was you know uh, at least above average for us. Uh, you know, not anything home run because we did have a wind issue happen, and you know, some of the fields had some 30% green snap in our area. You know, and uh, um, you know that that hurt the top end, but still overall a very good year for us. And do you have any old crop left? I do have some old crop left. I. I've got some sitting in the bin right now trying to wonder why these markets are going down like they are. I mean, I wish you could tell me a little better on how, how I need to market this old crop grain. You and me both. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, it's always a challenge when you hold on. It's a little bit of that gambling side. So you have some, I'm sorry, you have beans left too or just the corn? Uh, I've, got, I've got some beans and uh, mostly corn left um, is what I've got is, I'd say majority of corn. I've got a, you know, two, three semi loads of beans left is all I've got. Yeah. All right. Uh, when you're farming, uh, do you think only farming when farming or do you think basketball uh, <laughs> while you're farming? How does the mind work in the middle of uh, September, October? You know, it depends what we're doing, you know, uh, during the busy time, um, without a doubt, my mind's on farming during you know, you get a long day working ground or sitting in the combine all day. I, I can't say that my mind doesn't wander a little bit of how, you know, different things for the basketball team. And, uh, you know, I think that's pretty normal to do. But, uh, you know, when we get into farming, I, I'm pretty, pretty all farmer mode. Uh, but uh, mine does, uh, especially when you've had the teams we've had in the last four years, it's uh, easy to drift and think about that team a little bit. Well, you said you've returned 14 years ago. What were you thinking 15 years ago you were going to do with your life? Well, I was a full-time teacher. Uh, I taught full-time for uh, five years, four of them at uh, Benton Shellsburg and, uh, you know, one in the Owine Community School District. And, you know, I was an assistant coach finishing up my school at, uh, you know, when I was an assistant at Jessup. So, you know, um, I was going to be a full-time teacher and then, you know, some um, – uh, some land came available for the family and I was able to, uh, um, dad call and tell me that this is available. If you want to do it, my wife was able to get a job back as a dental hygienist in Algona. We actually had to live apart for four of the months. Um, uh, just as I had, we had our first child because, uh, her job came calling and I had to finish my teaching contract out. So, uh, we had a four month little gap there of, uh, living apart and her living with my parents while we were moving back and you know that whole transition so but yeah i've heard that story before that one's uh that one's familiar that happens you know you got to fill out that teacher contract and <clears throat> i mean 20 years ago was it always i mean 15 years ago is one thing but 20 years ago when you're going through college i mean mm -hmm. was the guy you're coaching the age of the kids you're coaching were you always thinking teaching coaching? Was farming ever a possibility? 
Uh, farming was always a possibility. My, my dad was pretty strong on his beliefs of the farm was always going to be here. I want you to go out and go do your thing. I want you to um, go experience college. I want you to go experience a job off of the farm. Um, and and uh, that was always a thing he pushed me in his life to do is not just go from high school right back to the farm. And uh, he said, there's more to the world than just our farm, you know, and, uh, and, you know, he was really wanting me to go out and do that. So, you know, I, I mean, we did when I left, I mean, I'd come back sometimes in the fall and spring and help, but, you know, overall from that is, uh, um, I, I mean, I, I stayed away for, you know, 10, 12 years of college and that, and, you know, and then was able to come back. I'm very happy I did that. You know, you, 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 you you get a lot of new experiences. You got to meet a lot of people you didn't know. And, you know, honestly, I got into a coaching profession that I really love. You know, uh, I, I guess I've always wanted to coach. I've been involved in athletics my whole life. And, uh, you know, um, and I'm happy that the basketball season's during the winter that I can uh, um, have a chance to balance them both without a doubt. So I guess when you moved back to be a farmer, was coaching, did that happen right away? Or did you have to like maybe sit out a year there too? <laughs> you know, I, I, I went from being the head girls coach at Vinton Shellsburg to moving back in the area. And there were just no head coaching jobs open. You know, you know I mean, so I jumped on as an assistant coach uh, uh, with Algona High School, the public school in town for two years. And then the uh, Bishop Garrigan job happened to open up. And, and, you know, I'd always been honest with Algona and everything. I'm, I'm looking to be a head coach again. If an area one opens up, that's probably where uh, I'm going to end up and, uh, and, uh, take my kids to, you know, and, uh, um, Bishop Garrigan opened up and, uh, I applied and thankfully got the job and I've been there ever since. But that's not, you're not an alum of there, are you? I am not. I'm not an alum. I, I graduated from core with Wesley Laverne. It's no longer a school. I was gonna say, the school that no longer exists, no longer exists. So, uh, I went to core with Wesley. Um, so I'm not an alum of Garrigan or, really had any ties to Garrigan. I was just, uh, you know, it was a job opening in the area that uh, um, I could see myself doing and uh, it, it's worked out very well for me. Oh, by the way, your old gym job would be right about there. And uh, <laughs> the other one, I guess I'm looking at Vinton, uh, if you would think of it this way. So that's the home spot uh, between your two. So that's always been kind of fun. We can talk about some of those old uh, common areas and CWL was uh, a good spot to, to be born. And then Garrigan comes calling. You, you get the job and you, you kind of get a couple of years under your belt. And then all of a sudden, uh, a once in a generation player comes along. When you know Audie Crooks is coming, uh, what are you thinking in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade? You know, I. Um, when Audie, she's in those grades, I should say. Sorry, not you. You know, Audie, and she'll tell you she's pretty raw in them fifth, sixth, seventh grade years. Uh, you know, she was always, uh, you know, liked basketball, but she really never took that step in putting, I would say, time in as much until, uh, you know, she got in junior high. I mean, she wasn't one that played third, fourth, fifth, sixth grade AAU travel ball all over. She didn't do that. You know, I remember sitting um, uh, at a skills thing um, that I had got her to go to. I took a bunch of elementary kids over to a skills night that uh, had her uh, future AAU coach at. And um, we were doing the, they were doing skills and uh, the future AAU coach is like, I, I had told him, I'm bringing a project over for you that I'd like you to look at, you know? And, and I, I mean, she's raw right now. She needs some help, but the upside is huge. I can see the upside. And, you know, I remember after that night of skills got over, we went out to supper and he's like, gosh, I'd really like her to play AAU with us this year. And so I said, well, let's call her right now. So I called Audie on her phone and uh, um, I said, hey, I'm sitting with the AAU coach, uh, Charles Young right now. And uh, he said he'd like you to play this weekend. And this is a Thursday night. He'd like you to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday in Ames with him. And she's like, let me talk to my mom. I'll get back to you. Five minutes later, she calls back. I'm all in. And from then on, I mean, she's been all committed year round to basketball from that moment. So, uh, you know, um, that's, uh, that's kind of the process on how that all started. And 
Audie goes on to win the Miss Iowa basketball for 2023, a, a state championship in her senior season. Um, to be able to say that you two are going to be tied for a, a, a generation, what does that mean to you to have the two of you mentioned so tightly? Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, Audie's been a special person in my life. And, uh, you know, I've made a relationship, Audie and I together, that, uh, you know, I'm going to be following her to four years of college, you know, and watching very closely and getting to get as many games as I can get to there and after college, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, she's, she's, she's a wonderful basketball player. She's, she's a better of a person when you get to know her outside of basketball, you know, I mean, we have talks um, about not even basketball, you know? So, I mean, being able to sit down with her and, you know, sit down with Molly and, and, and just talk, not just basketball is, you know, a relationship with them two players that uh, I, I, we have built together. So, I mean, uh, we've been through uh, the toughest, the toughest years with losing at the buzzer at a state title and uh, having to uh, reevaluate and find yourself after that moment uh, to get back to win back to back state championships eventually was no doubt a bittersweet to, way to end uh, both of them players careers. I think I asked some of your players, uh, I know I asked this year, and I might have asked last year, I said, did Coach Swab ever take you out to the farm and make you do labor or, or uh, team, team building, as it's called? Did you ever make the girls come out and do work for you? I never did. The one summer they were looking to get their, uh, wanted to get a tan on. And I said, well, I got some rocks for you to pick up. I said, <laughs> and uh, I thought I had the three of them to come out and pick some rock up, but then they found out the, uh, that both the Gator and uh, the Polaris General had a roof on the top, and they did not like that uh, it wasn't open to the sun. So I guess I lost that manual labor for the day. <laughs> well, they could have rotated. One could have drove, and the other one could have walked and got in some steps that way. I think it was partly not the – I mean, it, some of it was the roof that they had on, and some of it was then they found out after talking to people that picking up rock isn't the most glorious of jobs and uh, not sure how the – uh, they would react to having uh, a multiple day of that. I'm with them. One my favorite either. I give you yeah. that. That's uh, that's one of those jobs I don't miss and talk about often. Uh, when you have um, the small town Iowa basketball player, uh, I still think embodies what a lot of Iowa basketball players of the past used to have, and it is an ag background some type of farm community uh that this basketball was that that outlet for some of these that might have been the only sport we're talking generations ago but give me a little bit of sense of the fabric of your teams and their connection to the land and does that make any difference to you if they do or do not have any connection to farming you know I would say in general, we're a very rural rural community uh, at Algona and, and Bishop Garrigan is a very um, farmer strong community. I would say all of our players, whether they have a direct uh, uh, spot in the farm, we have players that bale hay in the summer. We have, we still, we have players that uh, have uh, uh, hog buildings um, attached to their families. Um, we have families, we have, players that uh, go out and help in fall harvest and spring planting. So not everyone does. I would say everyone on our team has a connection to um, at least a family member that is a part of a farm. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a very uh, rural driven community that um, that is very, uh, you know, have a lot of farming in their lives. And you've coached in a lot of districts where that's the case. What's that conversation like when you might have a parent that says, yeah, I don't think my kid can go out or go this weekend for this tournament to, she mm -hmm. has to be home to help us do X. Mm -hmm. We we've had that before. I mean, we, we've, we've had that before and it's, it's definitely a balance, you know, dealing with any, I would say players uh, in this generation, um, you, you've got to have a balance between everybody is, has busy lives. Everybody has busy things. And it's, it's that balance of finding, um, out if you know a kid has to miss an off-season workout because of you know they're a part of something or you know a farm or a family business or something like that you you just got to live with it you know um and you just got to find that um that middle zone i guess of um being able to make basketball exciting and fun for them and um let them know that they have 
uh, of freedom to do that. I, the last thing I ever want is to lose a kid because they say, well, I've got to help on the farm a lot. Well, my first thing is always, how can we make this work? What, what, in what ways can we make this work for both of us to have a part? Because uh, in a small school like we're in, we, we, we need all of the players, all the athletes that we can get out for basketball to, to have a successful team every year. Is there a conversion table in, in your coach's handbook of if you bail six racks of hay, you're off weights for two days or something? You know, I don't think there's a conversion table. Uh, I, I'd, I'd strongly say that there hasn't been many of them in the program bail six racks of hay and then come to come to basketball practice. I, I'd say that. But, uh, um, yeah, I mean, there, the, we have definitely had players not make some workouts because of that, no doubt. All right, so just one. And, and frankly, not many people do squares anymore anyway. It's, right, not a lot. Yeah, and they might, sitting in the tractor all day, yeah, I think you still have to come and lift weights tomorrow morning. That's right. Yeah, you have to make that count. Um, what is the, what do you like about a player that does have an ag background? I mean, you talk about the balance and understanding how you mm -hmm. have to kind of give and take, but... Do you notice anything different about someone who might be able to balance a lot of those activities different than somebody who might not have that? You know, uh, uh, I mean, being able to handle some, you know, even if it's just not, I mean, maybe it is some farming and basketball background, but, you know, being involved in a lot of things, um, I think makes you a little more well-rounded. You know, Audie was involved in almost everything Garrigan could possibly put on. And, um, you know, it made her be able to balance her time a lot better and, uh, you know, manage her time. You know, it's, you know, we talk all the time when we get into postseason play and stuff about, you know, you've got to manage your bodies with your sleep, your nutrition, your, you know, who you're hanging around with, things you're doing on the weekends. And, you know, um, if your goal is to be, you know, uh, at, 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 at the end of the line, at the end with a championship, uh, all those things have to fall into place. And, uh, you know, I, I would think, uh, you know, having people involved in agriculture definitely knows that, that helps them with a balance of the team and uh, um, um, being able to balance practice and to be more well-rounded without a doubt. Do you have perspective? I mean, you kind of talk about your mind might wander while you're in the, in the combine cab. Do you write, or rethink how you're going to do practice in the coming weeks uh, while you're on the tractor? And do you have like a notebook or the, the app on your phone that you kind of talk into when an idea strikes? Yeah, I, uh, I definitely have a notebook that goes around with me uh, at least during fall, you know, of different ideas and different uh, things. And, you know, in the tractor, I listen to a lot of podcasts of, uh, you know, different basketball coaches and, uh, you know, some different ideas that they have. And uh, um, I would say that's constantly daily bouncing off of my brain, especially in the fall, in the spring, not so much. It's, it's a ways away, you know, and uh, the spring is kind of a downtime from basketball. We kind of um, take a step back from the team and uh, we really don't pick up any team stuff until um, school gets out for the summer you know, or any workout. So, you know, the spring consists of planting and uh, taking my boys to their AAU basketball. I get to transition to just a dad mode in the uh, spring and sit in the stands and watch uh, my two boys play AAU basketball all around. And uh, weekends consist of, if I'm not in the field, it's I'm still in a gym um, chasing them around. <laughs> Do you take the notebook out then and write things down as opposed to be that coach that yells uh, or that parent that yells at the coach? How are you? Absolutely as a not. <laughs> no, I, I go into this AAU season and I sit in the stands and uh, 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 enjoy watching them play without, without uh, much pressure on either one of our sides. You know, uh, that's my time to do everything I can to get my kids uh, game developed for their next season. And uh, uh, we try to do that and focus on that. I think it's Frank Martin. There's some comments that that make he, that make the rounds with him, where he just says, "When I go to watch my kid play, I'm just in the stands and I don't say a word because yeah. all those people are volunteering to to raise his kid on the court. The least he can do is keep his mouth shut." So you sounds yeah. like you're yeah. in that camp. Yep. Well, I try. I try. The competitive aspect also comes out in me. If if anything, my sons get uh, uh, a little decision making. Uh, uh, 
tongue lashing once in a while of their court performance. But I'd say for the most part, I, I sit back and just enjoy watching them play. I like, I like to do that to not after an intense uh, girls game in basketball, you know, when you're still uh, adrenaline's high, I, I like to get into the uh, AAU season of, I don't even have a girl team around me. I just get to watch my boys play and that's fun. Do you in say January, if you're hauling grain or something, do you, re- and maybe the night before was a loss or somebody threw a zone at you that was different. Do you replay that uh, and maybe get a little distracted at that time of year or do you have to really kind of focus on the job <laughs> and you in know, January? I, uh, yeah. You know, uh, I would say that's more of a uh, sleepless night affair. And uh, you know, I usually by the morning have, uh, kind of a direction of where I want to go the next day. You know, uh, if if that happens on the basketball court, uh, um, it's definitely a sleepless night for me if something stumps us or, you know, that uh, I spend a lot of time watching film. I spend a lot of time, you know, after games, sitting in my basement and, and, and watching uh, quite a bit of film and uh, a lot of self-evaluation on what I should have done differently here, what I should have, could have done here, you know, and uh, I, I make them notes and stuff to myself to make sure that uh, hopefully that adjustment's made the next time. You're not sitting at the line at the co-op or the ethanol plant watching huddle, are you? Absolutely not. No, nope, not me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to let, yeah, we don't need to let the DOT see my phone out at all when I'm driving that semi. <laughs> well, if it's parked and you're waiting, come on, we all know. Uh, your son, uh, Colin has been uh, with you on the side I and mean, he's to that age right now. Um, what's he think about what dad does? Does he, does he think farming, coaching, playing, you know, I mean, it's pretty young, but you also are setting an example for him too. Yeah. You know, uh, both of my sons, uh, you know, Carter, he's a freshman now and he was the same way Colin was all those years, not as visible just because, uh, we didn't get put on the big stage like we have been in the last four years, but you know, my, my high school boy was the same way Colin sat on the bench all the way through he got too cool to hang out with dad on the bench anymore you know and uh, that's you know where, where we've got Colin now you know I mean both of my boys uh, it's a family ordeal my wife both of my boys me we we love basketball we like watching it we like going to games that doesn't involve anything you know it's just something that all four of us share together and uh, you know it's neat to be able to have Colin on the bench as it was for Carter when he was younger you know i you know, I, I want them around that, you know, I want them around that. And both of them love the game of basketball and put a lot of time in. And uh, I, I challenge there's few kids, uh, you know, that have sat on as many benches as those kids uh, throughout their lifetime. Uh, I remember Carter, when he was born, um, he came to the Shellsburg gym before he went home. I mean, dad had open gym when we brought him home from the hospital and mom and him stopped there before he even went to his house. So those kids have been around battles, basketballs, great wins, horrible losses. They've been, they've been a part of that, all of that type of locker room their whole life. And you, can you get Carter to, uh, to do some work for you in the fall or in the spring? He does a lot of work for us in the spring and fall. Uh, you know, this fall, every, he played football and um, there were some Friday night games. He'd come and work ground after his Friday football game. But I would say it's a, for him, it's a 15 hour day on a Saturday and a 15 hour day on a Sunday of him working ground or running the grain cart. Uh, um, he's very much involved in the spring and, and, and fall outside of his sports, you know, so, uh, you know, sports take up and school takes up a lot of time, but, uh, outside of that, he is definitely on the farm uh, earning his wage. There's no doubt. I just happened to watch the Niall Kinnick documentary uh, yesterday, and there was a line that Niall Kinnick, when he wrote back to his uh, his family, was prolific at writing letters, and he said, the guys that have the uh, the rural background have no complaints about the workouts right now. Uh, mm-hmm. They work hard. Now, granted, this is the we're talking the 1930s and 40s uh, when he's re- referencing it, but do you find that the same today, the kids who put in those 15-hour days? They might not complain as much uh, when you make them run lines. Well, you know, me coaching girls is uh, maybe a little different than what, uh, you know, Coach Wadley and Coach Meister go through with the boys with their farming. But, you know, I Coach Wadley, our football coach, who just got put in the Hall, and Hall of Fame at Garrigan, he has always said 
there is uh, weight room strong and then there's farm strong and those are two different things and uh, he'll take a farm strong kid that uh, that uh, loves the weight room over just a weight room kid any day of the week. <laughs> You'll absolutely take that. Uh, let's yeah. go back to Carter and Colin for just one last thing. Uh, you know, if you're coaching and you're looking at numbers and uh, defenses and things, have you taught them how to read maybe some uh, some technical charts and figure out when maybe an opportunity <laughs> to buy or sell is coming? Oh, boy, I wish that was. If they could uh, gain that knowledge, That's if they want to do anything and come back and farm someday, if they'd bring that marketing knowledge uh, back with them, that'd be great. I feel... I spark spark the market every time I sell. I just when I sell the next day it goes up. So I I'm just in that. Uh, I I just feel I every time I sell I joke with my friends and say, hey guys, sold some corn today. Just hold on 24 48 hours. You're gonna get a bump here. So I feel like uh, that's been me uh, as of late. <laughs> Uh, I I don't think you're alone in that. I think a lot of people <laughs> feel that way. So you're okay in that sense. Yeah. All right. I appreciate it. Congratulations on the season. It's been really fun to uh, chat with you over the years, and I hope uh, we get to continue to talk farming and basketball. We don't have to stick just to so farming. Too. you got those state teams coming. Yeah, I hope so, too. It's been a, it's been a heck of a ride, and uh, um, you do whatever you can on this end to get me some marketing advice to sell a little better corn than what I've, uh, I've done as of late. <laughs> All right. Every Friday night, we make the podcast right into your phone. We'll make it real easy for you. How about that? Sounds good. Part. I'll be listening. <laughs> All right. Brandon Schwab, appreciate uh, the time. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. My thanks to Brandon Schwab for his time today on the MTOM Show podcast, which comes out each and every Tuesday. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, where you can listen or watch us on YouTube. We appreciate either that you may do. If you have any feedback for the show, market to market at iowapbs.org is the email to use. We'll see you next time. Thank you, and bye-bye.